In this video, we're going to go through how to create a cul-de-sac at the end of a roadway in your corridor. You're doing it manually and without the intersection uh, tools. Quick tool tour of what we have is we've got a topographic survey surface. We have a corridor and its associated corridor surface. And we've got a line here, polyline created that represents our edge of pavement of where we want the, the uh, cul-de-sac to be. Something of note is that notice that I have the polyline here extended onto my corridor past the tie points. So that's something important. We want to have a little bit of overlap. The distance doesn't matter as long as you have some overlap. If you've watched our curb return videos, the workflow is essentially the same. So um, here we go. First thing we're going to want to do is in this case, we're going to create an alignment of our edge of pavement. So let's create it from objects. I'll select that object and enter it is going clockwise. So I take note of that. Leave it alone. Give it a name. I'm going to put it under a miscellaneous type just for some housekeeping and leave everything else alone in my case. And I'm going to ex erase my existing entity. Hit OK. Now that I have this alignment, let's go ahead and cut our profile along that alignment. So we'll come over here and select it. In this case, we're going to cut the profile of both our corridor surface and our topo and I am going to ensure that I can tell the difference so I'm going to change the style of my corridor and I'm going to automatically draw that in a profile check my station range here okay we're good so we're going to create a profile view of it and place it over here delete whatever this is hanging out over here so here is our profile view and notice that we can see the surface of our uh, corridor so we make sure we know where to tie our EOPs. And now that's done, let's come over here and do our profile creation tools and let's create us a profile of what we want this curbing to do. So what I like to do is I put the beginning and the end first. So I want to make sure I am tied to the road here and I want to make sure I am tied to my road here. And now that that's done, I'll come in and insert PIs and curves. And you can use whatever workflow you like. But um, in this case, we're just going to plop one in right here at the top. And now the reason you do this method on a roundabout is that you may need to control this edge of pavement for tying to lots or controlling where water out falls because in this case any drop of water that hits beyond that high point is going to run this curve and run all the way around and come back into my roadway and if that's okay that's fine that for you that's uh fine to do that but you may have be crossing a draw and you're wanting to make sure the low is here in this draw or something you can use that and control it by using the engineering profile one of the reasons why you do this methodology gives you a bit more control. So now I've got that, let's just come in and pop a circular curve in here. I don't know, um, 100 feet. There we go. Now we've got us a profile. And now that we've got all these pieces ready for design, we're going to use the exact same workflow as our curb returns. We need to ensure now that we've got the alignment, we've got a profile, and we've got a design profile. We now need to make sure we have an assembly. And we want an assembly that is going to run along the edge of pavement, continue our curb and gutter, and have a lane and the daylight. So what we have over here is exactly that. This assembly is called uh, left curb and lane. And it's got my lane, my curb, and gutter, and a daylight. So, and it's going clockwise, so we want to make sure that our lane is on the right of our insertion point. So we're going to use this left one. So with all that said, let's come down here and modify our corridor. I'm going to select the corridor, and I'm going to add a baseline. Give it a name, and choose the alignment. And hit OK. Choose the profile and hit OK. Now that baseline is in there, let's add a region. 
along that pro that baseline. Now, remember I had an overlap. You don't want it, but I tied my profile view at that edge of my overlap. So I can't just do fill or to really tick it off. So we're going to start here and we are going to finish here. And we are going to choose our left curb and lane and hit OK. I'm going to leave targets alone just so you can see it. And there we go. Hit escape and it's going to try to rebuild. And depending on the complexity of your model, this can take a few moments. Because it's automatically trying to create the surface here for me. <clears throat> All right, first thing we're going to want to do is edit this frequency. So with that selected, I'm going to right click and go to modify region and edit frequency. Click in here. And um, tangents doesn't really matter because we don't have any. But we're going to put 10 and I'm going to change my curves to by curvature, actually to by both. And we're going to put 10 foot increment on curves and leave the mid ordinate alone. And hit OK and see how it looks. There we go. That looks much more like a curve and I could even tighten it up a little bit more because it is a little segmented. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to leave it like this. Uh, get this profile layout tools box out of my way. <laughs> it's rebuilding for some odd reason. All right, now that's done. Let's play with our targets. So with it selected, I'm going to modify region and I am going to edit my targets. Choose the region. See it selects it and I'm going to hit enter. In this case, we're going to have to do both our offsets and our surfaces. The surface is the easy one, so that's just our tie, our daylight. So let's just set it. And now let's go over to our offset and elevations. Now we have two targets. We've got a horizontal and a vertical, or an alignment and a profile. So on our offset target, we're going to... I'm going to use my pick box and I'm going to say tie to my center line profile horizontally, extend it to the horizontal alignment. Vertically, let's do the same thing. We're going to click that and hit enter. And actually, it didn't even let me do it. Um, I know that I'm using the road center line alignment and I have two here and I know the val in my case is my vertical alignment so I'm going to check that box and I'm going to hit OK. Let it rebuild and there we go. So now we've got a corridor and a cul-de-sac and you can see how it's radiating and coming and tying to these points so it gives you some control over it all. And that's pretty much it. And I could come in here and change this and make it more frequent if I wanted to. Um, I want to save my drawing real fast before I do too much since it needs to be rebuilt. So let's rebuild it. There we go. I'm going to select the surface and do object viewer. I saved it in case this crashes. And I'm going to pan over here, change this to uh, aided. If it will render for us. Oh, I have to tilt it. Duh. And now you can you can see. how it is going around and tying. There's a fill slope, or a cut slope, excuse me, and vice versa around it. Just gives you that control for the cul-de-sac. And you can have multiple cul-de-sacs in a single corridor. So just a different way of pushing it in an appropriately modeling corridor. If you like this video, please click the like button and feel free to subscribe.